That's where Mandelbrot's law comes in. Mandelbrot's law is a variation of Zipf's law. You can think of it as an improvement. It's basically a way to tweak Zipf's law to make it a better fit for rare words. So the way it's usually uh, formulated is uh, you take the Zipf's law formulation, constant over the rank, you add a constant q to the rank r, and you raise the whole quantity to the power of s. So you get r plus q raised to the power of s, and that is the denominator instead of just the rank r. Now, the parameters q and s are metaparameters. This is, these are numbers that you don't know a priori, but you fit them, you tune them to fit uh, the data that you're trying to fit. So what are the advantages? Obviously, it's a better fit. If you look on the, uh, if you look on the figure, um, you, uh, I have a different corpus here. These are the words from the US uh, Constitution. The black dots are the empirical observations, and the red and blue lines are two fits of the Mandelbrot law. And as you see, uh, it fits the high-frequency word as well as zips, but it also, hug, uh, it also hugs the lower-frequency words much better than the zips law would. So zips law would always be a straight line, and Mandelbrot's law uh, curves down as, uh, as expected. Right? So that's one advantage. It's a better fit to the data. Um, another advantage of using Mandelbrot's law, uh, it, it, it's nicer if you try to reason about frequencies probabilistically because it allows infinite uh, vocabularies. So one annoying thing about Zipf's law is um, if you use it to predict the probabilities of words, then you cannot have an infinite vocabulary. Because uh, Zipf's law, it's just 1 over x, and we know that 1 over x integrates to infinity. There is no, it's not a valid, it's not a proper probability distribution over, um, <coughs> over ranks. Uh, uh, which is, of course, uh, annoying. But with Mandelbrot's law, as long as s, your constant, uh, is, above, um, is above 1, uh, you, have, um, you have a proper probability distribution that will integrate to a finite number, and you can, uh, and you can use it in, in, in many uh, of the models that you might construct. Okay, now, uh, Mandelbrot's law, Zipf's law, they are specific cases of a much more general family of distributions. And these are called power law distributions. These distributions arise in all sorts of places. Now, uh, text is probably one of the first places where they were observed, but now these distributions are quite popular and you see them all over the place. So you will see them in, uh, in graph analysis where people analyze the connectedness of graphs. You will see them in social networks and lots of other applications. Uh, and I'm just listing a few, uh, a few different names uh, for specific variants of the power law distributions. So we talked about Ziff's and Mandelbrot's law, and now what I want to talk about is uh, a very strange variant of it called the Benford's law.